In this scenario, we're gonna go over uh, rescue out of descent. So our victim's in descent mode. Say he has some sort of medical condition that he needs to get rescued from. Um, this is an old um, SPRAT requirement uh, rescue. We like to show it still just because it does have relevance and just have some good techniques in it. So this is one of those um, rescues that is kind of a worst case scenario rescue that we would do it like this. It's a rope access style where we go on that individual's ropes to get them. Ideal world is we would do something else with uh, uh, have our own rope sets and drop up next to them and put them onto our own ropes. Um, this is like one of those, like maybe we're on a job site together. We know what the anchors are, we know the ropes are still good. It has nothing to do with that. It only has to do with the individual on the ropes. So for this one what we're gonna do is you can come up from the top or you can come from below. This one, the rescue is gonna come up from below. Um, he's gonna take both ropes, put them on my left-hand side. This situates the ropes better for the rescue. He's gonna put himself on the opposite of what my ropes are. So his main line is gonna go on my belay line and his belay line is gonna go on my main line, okay? So as the rescuer is coming up, you know, he's, he's obviously gonna be talking to the victim, find out what's wrong with the victim. If there's something, if there is something wrong with him medically, he's gonna call 911 and the alert whoever needs to come on there. But he's gonna go up and get him down. He's not gonna wait for, for, um, for rescue to come and get him. He's gonna try to come and get him, go up and get him down himself. As he approaches the victim again, he will be talking to the victim, assessing the victim as he comes up, assessing his kit, assessing his gear. As he comes up, you can see, um, first thing he wants to do with himself is he wants to he wants to take care of himself first, okay? He doesn't want to worry about me yet, you know, make sure I'm okay and then take care of himself, get himself set up for rescue and then start making attachment points. Um, you don't want to start making attachment points and then he's doing two things at once and that's when things get confusing. Take care of yourself and then worry about making your attachments and, and doing the rescue. So he coming up here, he wanted to bypass my descendants, right? So he had his belay device here, he bypassed it with an ASAP ASAP is what we, our preferred um, belay device is for partner rescue because it's on a loaded line and the teeth on here, the shock pack, it grabs on loaded lines very well. The other thing he's doing is on his, on his main line now is he's getting up high and he's going to transition over into descent. So again, he's going to put himself into descent and get ready and get himself ready prior to, to doing anything with me. All right, now the rescue is set. He said in the descent mode, now he can now he can address me, he can address the victim, you can start making looking at making patient patient uh, his connections to the patient. Mm -hmm. So his first connection point and the main one is gonna be this sling here. The sling he's gonna attach into my sternal D-ring. Um, and the reason why we go into the sternal is we like if, if there is a victim with a problem, you wanna keep and try and keep him upright. If he tries to load me on here and I'm having an issue, you can see I'm going to be laying back here. My head's going to be down. I'm not going to be upright. If he can load me off my sternal, at least that's going to keep me a little bit more upright when he's going to bring me down. Um, Another thing you can do at this point as well is if they do have a little bit of slack in their harness as well, cinch that up to alleviate some of the problems Nate just said. So now he has this on here. His next point of connection is going to be he has a progress adjust, another lanyard. It can be many different types of things. We need, we need a second point onto, onto our victim, okay? The other thing we didn't mention too is with the that first initial strap, it's on the back side of that carabiner, his main carabiner, okay? It's not going into the D-ring. As I'm in his D-ring, once he loads me onto it, it's gonna pull down on his harness. And it's low, when it's on the back side of this carabiner, when it loads, it's gonna be onto the main line. And you can see at the end, he's gonna be able to disconnect himself from me completely when we get down. Second point again, this just needs to be a, needs to be a second point of connection. It's going to his central D ring again, and then onto me into my sternal. So we have both going into the sternal D ring. Okay. So at this point, if I count my connections, I have one, two. He has one, two to me. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and take his ASAP off and clear it from the mix. What that does is it kind of cleans everything up for me as I go to progress on. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into position. Lower him off. 
Once I get slackened out, I can de rig it from the line. From here, I'm set. I want to make sure that my ASAP is free moving. From here, the clutch itself as a device doesn't require a friction carabiner on the backside. We've always found it to be quite ideal to have that little bit of extra control when you're going down and moving. So now from here, we can go and just pile down. Once I get to about, you know, six inches or so from the ground, so he's still suspended. Um, depending on your time frames and suspension trauma, it's going to dictate. But what I can do is I can come off the system and I can leave him hanging. So what I can do is, the big reason why we put that sling on the spine side is so that I can escape from the front side where the gate is, derig my second point of attachment, and then EMS or whoever you have on standby can go ahead and tend to your patients.